you are not going to stop low frequencies with any kind of material at all. But he wants to put carpet in the garage so they can rehearse the band, and then they go in the garage, and all of a sudden this, the neighborhood's still wide awake at 10 o'clock at night because you're hearing boom, 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 kick drum all over town, and whatever bass is coming out, and you're liable to hear a lot of the drums. You won't hear the high end of the... Well, let's just say you go into the garage, you insulate the whole garage, and then you put uh, carpet up on all the walls. Right? Boy, it should be good, huh? Never happen. You can, your bass frequency, you won't even see it. See this wall over here? If I put a bass amp here, hear that pitch? When I equal that pitch of the bass amp, this wall's going to move. And any other bass sound, it's just going to go right through this wall. The wall's not going to affect the bass sound at all. But when I come over here, now listen to this. You see that? There ain't no bass sound going to mess with that. Bass is not going to move that. In order for bass to move that, it's got to match that pitch. And the mass is cement this thick. It's not going to move it. The only way to stop bass frequencies is with mass. That's why I included the chapter in the end of the book. There's an example of a studio wall. And it's got rubber on all the studs. Then it's got 5 eighths drywall. Then it's got half inch soundboard on top of that. Then it's got another layer of 5 eighths drywall. So the wall's that thick. And it sits on rubber. So now whatever moves that wall that's that thick is not necessarily going to be transmitted to the stud because of the rubber. What we've done is we've isolated the room from the outside world and the outside world from the room by this mass. But now what we have to do is we have to deal with the acoustics inside the room. So now you need 705 compressed fiberglass and the Felter burlap over the top of that that will absorb a good range of your high frequencies. We're talking about the difference between the low frequencies and the high frequencies and how you contain them are two totally different stories. You can't contain the low frequencies with any kind of material. What I want us to realize is that base frequencies react one way in your containment and high frequencies are another way to contain them. And you're not going to solve the solution with carpet. Carpet is a very uneven absorbent of frequencies. It's not as good as the right insulation or the right material. So you're not going to solve your problem with just carpet. You need mass. Then if you do that, then you can contain the sound. But then once you contain the sound within this structure, now you got to live inside it with all the sound that's in it. Now you've got to deal acoustically inside it so that you don't eat up all your eyes, but yet you have just enough, bless you. But then again, you you know, you're looking for the sound you want. But now what we do then is when we close mic an instrument, what we would really like to happen is that is once the sound got to the microphone, we want it to disappear. We don't want it to bounce off anything and come back. If I have this microphone close here, I'm hearing the sound of this uh, saxophone. So I got the sound of the saxophone and I can hear it, you know, good and full. Now, the more I back away from it, the more that microphone is now hearing the reflection off of the wall. So now all of a sudden, her sound gets distant, more and more distant. No presence in the sound. Because it's getting all of these reflections and a lot of them are phase canceling because they're the same thing, you know, the same frequency coming back. Now look at this. What if I had an instrument right here and I'm playing my saxophone and I've got a microphone right here. Now my sound is going to go straight from my bell to the microphone. And it's also going to bounce off of this wall and arrive at the microphone. It's going to give me a face problem right here at the mic. Because that, that same frequency went straight and the same one went over here, bounced off, and arrived at a different point in time to the microphone. Problem. Because microphones don't hear like we do. Like if you're at a party, you want to hear the conversation across the room from the guy you just broke up with, you know. While you're sipping your little drink, you know, you can focus in on that conversation, you know. Especially if you're looking at him, you focus your hearing, right? Well, a microphone can't do that. Your brain is doing that. The microphone hears it exactly as it is. We used to have the older, uh, they put new fluorescents in. They buzzed. Big time buzz. Bzzz. And nobody would hear it until I'd point it out. 
And then all of a sudden it was annoying. Because, you know, everybody's, and see, and that just proves my point. Everybody's paying attention to what I'm saying, and they had eliminated that. Because their, their mind is focusing here. But as soon as you point it out, all of a sudden, now, when the student would make a recording in here, there would be almost as much buzz on the tape as there was my voice. And then you get home, you say, Jeebers, I heard everything he said. I didn't pay attention to that. Well, that's what it is. Your mind focused on this, not that. But the, the microphone doesn't have that ability. Whatever the volume is, when it hits that microphone, that's what's going on it. That's why you've got to be careful with the leakage. And you've got to protect the microphone from the sound you don't want it to hear.